So it's Luis J Gomez has got a new um comedy special out. Like, it's called Thirty Minutes of Luis J Gomez. The thumbnail is tragic, in my opinion. It doesn't really make any sense. There's like three fonts here going on. Um, you know, I'm being a bit nitpicky, but it doesn't really make sense. There's like three, basically three fonts in it. I think maybe even four. Um, Gas Digital always makes me laugh. I'm sorry. I know some of you guys might have memberships on it, but I could never let the name Gas Digital be coming out of my fucking bank balance every week or month. Having that name of my fucking account, <laughs> Gas Digital. <laughs> i'm sorry i just couldn't do it man it's so fucking lame but you know you gotta do what you gotta do because I, I still envision a future where he will end up selling it to a big brand place or something or network and i'll look like an idiot by laughing at it all the time but i don't know man like i don't know it's just not for me you know it really is not for me there's there's nothing a gaggle of guys that look like that could say to me that would interest me zero and I'm sure it's funny. Legion of Skanks is, is good. I like that. But all the other shows, no thanks. If you come on Legion of Skanks, you're funny, cool. But, you know, come on. What am I going to listen to these these four guys talk about? What are they going to tell me about life? Come on. Anyway, um, 30 Minutes with Lucia Gomez, presented by Gas Digital, full special. A 30-minute special. That's, is it actually 30 minutes? Yeah, it's actually 30 minutes. It's 30 minutes and 51 seconds. So big up, Louis J. Gomez, to actually doing a 30-minute special. Let's see what it's saying. A lot of you guys probably know me. Uh, for those of you that don't know me, I just turned 41 years old on April Fool's Day. April Fool's, thank you. April Fool's Day is my birthday, and it became a comedian. Isn't that the perfect birthday for a comedian? Isn't that ironic? <laughs> yeah, perfect. That's nothing. I have another friend who was born on Columbus. Oh, talking so fast, bro. Take it easy. What are people say? Gringo Puppy is worse because they put a lot of effort into that. <laughs> actually Uche's got a good Uche always knows she always got away with words that's very very accurate Gringo Pappy they actually tried to make it look good and it looked like that <laughs> whereas with this you know it just threw it together and made the best of it whereas you know Brendan thought he was replicating Showtime quality with what he had you know he thought those cardboard cutout was those cardboard that cardboard cutout of the city landscape was just as good as the massive Showtime letters that he had on his first show, right? The the you be surprised because that stage looks incredible. It's lit immensely. The letters, the the stage, the venue is in the theater. Oof, it looked fucking. That looked like it's got, they got spent money on it. It wouldn't surprise me if somebody that's you know got insider knowledge of Showtime told me that they never made any money back on that first special. It wouldn't surprise me if they said, you know what, we spent a lot on producing that special and we didn't make it back because that special looked good. To take away the comedy, just looking at it, it was shot impeccably. Audio, banging. Editing, banging. Everything about it, lighting, banging. Color correction, banging. But the material... Yeah, so yeah, I think Uche's right. At least with this, they're kind of going for like a, a rustic, relaxed, we're just hanging out, this is not a special, don't be freaked out type of vibe. I'm a stay, and he's a murderer and a rapist, so. <laughs> yeah, we always talk about it. We're like, dude, I know we were born to do what we do. This is fucking crazy. <laughs> I, uh, I know that I'm getting older because of the way that all of my friends talk. Uh, I'm on a diet right now, and I was telling my buddy the other day what I do when I'm on a diet, and uh, he goes, yo, bro, Jesus. your diet's so gay. He called my diet gay. Who calls a diet gay? That's crazy, right? This is what I do. If I'm eating a cheeseburger, I'll take the bun off the burger, then I'll mush it in the shape of a cock, and I'll shove it up my ass. <laughs> I start fucking myself with the cheeseburger bun right at the table. He's like, holy shit, dude, that's really gay the way you're shoving that cheeseburger bun into your asshole. I'm like, okay, boomer, I guess I'm gay. <laughs> I, uh, I love crazy white bitches. That's my type. The crazier, the better. Fuck yeah, any crazy white bitches here? A couple, yeah. They're, uh, they're getting very popular. They're making documentaries about them now. I, I watch all the crazy... Christ, bro. My nigga's speaking like he's in an auction house or something. What are those people call that? Auction houses. Like, fuck, bro. That sentence was like that's a people accuse me for having run-on sentences he's got a run-on special <laughs> like yo 
Uh, I love crazy white bitches. That's my type. The crazier, the better. Fuck yeah. Any crazy white bitches here? A couple? Yeah. They're, uh, they're getting very popular. They're making documentaries about them now. I, I watch all the crazy white bitch documentaries. You guys see the Casey Anthony documentary? Oh my God. How? Chris Mack said it, he talks mad fast the whole time. It's kind of impressive, to be honest. Yeah, on a podcast, but I think if you're on a podcast having a stream of consciousness, it's quite impressive because you've got to fill in, fill in dead air. People are listening to you while they're doing the dishes, changing their kid's diaper, fixing something in the garage. It's quite impressive to hear that in the background, somebody just not letting no dead air sit because sometimes listeners, I know myself, you react to dead air more because you're just listening. You can hear, you think something's happened to your phone that someone's about to ring you or it's run out of battery. So you just want to keep it going. So that's good in a podcast. But when you're on a stage, you should probably just slow it down. Take your time and really sit with your jokes sit with your punt lines or whatever they're called right like you want to you make people to feel where you're coming from to not expect where your joke is going and then to deliver the lines but it's just like this guy is just going ra, 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 ra. oh it's casey anthony <laughs> holy shit do you see her ass you see that one picture of her ass I, I'd say she has junk in the trunk, but I feel like that's insensitive, you know? <laughs> she murdered her daughter. Imagine what she could do to my cock. That is a dark bitch. You know she's good in bed. She murdered her child to go out and get laid. That was the first time that I realized that a woman could transition to become a man. I watched the, uh, the Amber Heard and Johnny Depp trial. Amber Heard is one of my favorite crazy white bitches. She's so hot, oh my God. And she's a crazy bitch. What was the big thing that came out of that trial? Uh, she shit in his bed, right? That's a crazy bitch, she shit in his bed. You wanna know how hot she is? He fucking took her back, it didn't end there. They stayed together for months after that. That's some good pussy, right? She's so hot, I'd let her shit in my bed, on my couch, on my kitchen counters. I would put wee-wee pads all over the house. I would treat her like a new puppy, I really would. If she fucked up, I'd rub her nose in it, hit her with a newspaper, be like, no, Amber, bad Amber. <laughs> my favorite crazy white bitch out of all of these chicks was this chick, uh, Michelle Carter. This is not as famous of a story, but it's a great one, okay? If you haven't heard this story, it's about two teenage kids. They were like 19 years old. They were dating for a while. And I guess when the girl went to go break up with the guy, the guy started threatening to kill himself, as we do. <laughs> if you're not threatening to kill yourself, were you ever really in love? That's what I say. <laughs> I threaten to kill myself anytime I argue with my girlfriend. I'm like, I will not do the dishes. I'd rather kill myself, you whore. I would rather die than take out the trash right now. Just so you know, put that in your fucking conscience. <laughs> so this guy starts threatening to kill himself, right? And the girl, she's a hot 19 year old girl and she's mad at him. So her reaction, obviously, she's like, fucking kill yourself, you pussy. I want you to kill yourself, you little bitch. I bet you don't have the balls to kill yourself. She starts texting him this, right? That kid, he fucking killed himself, he did. <laughs> Yeah, he did. And uh, they took that girl's text messages and they put her on trial because they said that she coerced him into killing himself. And they actually... This is as funny as a school bus on fire. For all the people out there who get on me because I can be sometimes impartial, maybe you could accuse me of sitting on the fence. Maybe you can accuse me of being in a captain... What's that? Captain Saver Chin. Captain Saver Papa. Captain Saver Brendan. Can you now understand why sometimes I'm not as harsh on Brendan's comedy as some of you guys are? If you watch enough specials, especially from some of these guys who are meant to be popular and big, you'll realize that a lot of these guys, a lot of these guys aren't good. They're not that funny. They're really not that funny. So it, I understand now why Brendan has the ego that he has with his comedy. To us, it doesn't make sense. To us regular people, to us people that have self-awareness, it doesn't make sense why somebody like a Brendan who's that bad could think he's Dave Chappelle or could think that people are getting confused and one day if Chris Rock writes his jokes for him. To a normal person, it doesn't make any sense. But I can understand why Brendan could start comedy and think, I can be better than these guys. These guys aren't that funny because this is who he's seeing on stage before him. All these guys are meant to be popular, they're meant to be seasoned. 
They've been in the industry for like 10 plus years, grinding, doing triple runs and shit, doing open mics, performing in shitholes, grinding. And this is where they're at. And they've done things correct as well. They, Brendan never done anything correct. He always took shortcuts. But these guys have done it correctly. They've got passed in places. They've been overlooked. They've done the fucking just for laughs. They've done all the shitty hole in the walls. They've done the open mics. And this is their level. Now I get why Brendan thinks he's a professional stand-up comedian. Now I get why he has the ego of a Bill Burr. Why he has the ego of a Louis, C, Louis, C, Louis CK and shit. Because he's looking at these guys thinking, hold on, you guys aren't that good compared to me. Like, even if you're being objective, even if you're not agreeing with what I'm saying, and you think Louis J. Gomez is funnier than Brendan. Let's be honest. Let's put it on a scale from one to 10. How much better, you know, obviously 10 being the highest, how much better is fucking Louis J. Gomez than Brendan? Be honest, guys, be honest. How much better is he? If Brendan's a five, what's a Louis J. Gomez? If Brendan's a five, what's a Louis J. Gomez? An eight? That's not that much. Is he a five also? Is he a six? Is he a seven? Come on. This is fucking shit. This is fucking shit. I don't care what anyone tells me. I don't care how long he's done comedy, how much open mics he's done. This guy stinks. He's actually funnier on podcasts than he is on stage. I'm actually surprised how fun, how unfunny he is on stage. He's actually way more funnier in conversation on a podcast, interacting with his live audience than he is on stage. He kills it on Legion of Skanks. He kills it on the clips you see of him on fucking, um, you know, Skankfest. But on stage, this fucking stinks. And if you've watched Shane Gillis' new special on Netflix, these guys aren't in the same profession. Shane Gillis is in the fucking, he's on another planet compared to him. If Shane Gibbs is a 10, what's Lewis? One? Two? <laughs> you know what I mean? Exactly. There's only 1,000. <laughs> Lewis Shane Gomez stinks, bro. This is terrible. I can't. I would be pissed if I paid money to see this. That's the thing these guys take for granted. Their fans come and pay money to see them. They pay money for a meet and greet, to take a picture, to sign some merch. I will be pissed if I spent thirty dollars plus. What is it? What what you guys got there? You got some like cover charge thing, right? I'd be pissed. I'd be furious, bro. If I had to pay for two drinks and an entry ticket. And some fucking chicken fingers and some chunky chips with no ketchup. I'd be pissed, bro, if you were standing there talking to me about fucking Casey Anthony in 2023. Kick guess what? Oh, she's really hot. She's crazy. What? Casey Anthony jokes in 2023. Hot crazy girl. What? Nah, nah, we're not doing this. We're doing Casey Anthony jokes. This is just as bad as Brendan Schaub's Hulk Hogan thing put that girl in jail and that girl should not be in jail that girl should be in sales you know what i'm saying <laughs> that bitch is a closer what are we doing get her on the phones they say that in sales right the abc's of sales right z i'd be lifting cars in the parking lot like pgl <laughs> he's attacking me he's attacking me he won't let me in he won't let me in <laughs> always be causing your boyfriend to fucking kill himself it's an old saying <laughs> my last girlfriend was uh she was a crazy white bitch she was my, my current girlfriend's a crazy white bitch they're all crazy white bitches right fuck's sake bro still with this bit she was crazy like she would always cry she cried about everything she was very young i i was 40 when we were dating she was 26 so there was a, a really big age gap by now and 26 year olds they're fucking emotional they're you know very young she cried so much it was like my relationship was a smashing pumpkins album that's how i described it but she was 26 so she didn't get the reference she was like what does that even fucking mean 
I had two pet names for her. It was Melancholy and the Infinite Sadness. That's what I would call her while she cried in the bedroom. I really would. She's like, I don't get it. Then after a little while, she started to catch on. I remember one time I was like, hey, babe, what's wrong? She's like, I don't know. The world is a vampire. <laughs> She almost tricked me into getting her pregnant like a month into the relationship. She almost tricked me. This way. Okay, I'm out. I'm out. I'm out. I'm out. Who's he going to be start talking about? Who's... Like, I'm out. I'm out. I'm out. I'm out. It's already incredibly boring and uninteresting when he speaks about these little intern girls from Legion of Skanks that he's fucking, right? Like, it's already boring when he starts talking about these little white girls that he fucks at Legion of Skanks and he brings them on the gas station. I don't know, whatever. All these women. It's fucking annoying. So if he's making jokes out of this stuff, thinking it's entertaining, I want to throw myself off a bridge. And we're only, guys, we're only five minutes in. And I'm already out. Let's see the timestamps. What's that one? Latina chicks. Ooh, can't wait for that. Ride or D girl. Pandemic. <laughs> Get fucked. Get fucked. You're charging me $30 to listen to you talk about interns you fuck in your office and the pandemic in New York. COVID jokes in 2023. In September. Not 2023, January. COVID jokes in September 2023 onwards, which is effectively 2024. Basically, the year's already done. You're telling me COVID jokes, pandemic jokes, lockdown jokes, mask jokes. Oh, in New York, we had these little tents outside restaurants. They weren't really, people said they were outside, but it's kind of like it's inside. It's like outside, inside. Um, go in, run in front of a car. We had to, you remember we had to, you know, spray down our groceries, wear a fucking mask at the shop. You had to social distance. Bro, bro, please stick the biggest part of a spoon at the tip of your penis and shove it in. I don't want to hear that shit. It continues. Karen and white chicks. Oh my God. Brendan Shaw might be better than Luis J. Gomez. Matt Rife is definitely bad. I'm, I don't care what you guys say. I don't care what you guys say. I'm trusting Matt Rife with my $50, with my $100 over him any time of the day. I don't give a fuck. Matt Rife can talk about his abs and, you know, having these fucking mums in the crowd giggling and shit. Have guys, security guys walking down the aisles with mops, right? Every fucking 10 minutes. I don't care. I'm trusting Matt Rife with my $50 over Luis J. Gomez any day of the week, bro. I'm offended. My one political joke. Exploring sh sex as a kid. They are. Feminist men. Oh, we've got some culture fucking, you know, culture war stuff, I'm, I'm assuming. Woke father, secret angels. Victoria's secret angels. Woke movies, little mum. <sighs> oh. Spider-Man. Sp <laughs> Baby Hitler, he's got a baby Hitler joke. <laughs> nah, this guy fucking sucks. We got Stinger Goo. I'd rather watch Chin cook some tacos. Exactly. I'd rather see Chin cook tacos. I'd rather see Chin... I'd rather see Chin make dinner for like five of his friends. Imagine the chaos of that. Watching Chin try to make dinner for five of his friends who are coming over. Um... Growing up in porn, on, on porn, sorry, superpowers, and then this one, never punished for... Okay, cool. Is is the Brendan one here? Because I, I just want to see what he said about Brendan. Maybe, actually, I'll see that on the fucking, on the... I'll see that. Oh, they use the same font on the Kurt Mesco one as well. So let's see, see what... What, what do you say about Brendan? Because I'm not, I'm not watching all that shit. I refuse. Um, let's see. What did you say about Brendan Schwabby? Where's my fucking... Um, no, it's not that. It's not this. Bear with me a second. Um, uh, where is it? Do I have it here? Nope, 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 nope. Cool. Let's go there. Maybe it's this. Bear with me a sec. Let me see what he said about here. I want to see what he said about Brendan because he kind of, he kind of, um, 
he kind of pulled a fast one on all of us, isn't it? A little bit. He was acting like he was part of the homeless cats, right? He was he was catching like he wanted an apron at PF Chang's, but secretly he always went to get in the good graces of Joe Rogan, and he played it well. To be fair, he played everybody quite well. Big up, Crash. They aren't comedians anymore; they're podcasters. Bingo, bingo. Crash has got it. Bingo, 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 bingo. Because I honestly do think. I honestly do think. Okay, Josie's saying it's the very last line. I honestly do think. Luis J. Gomez is 100 times better as a podcaster. Sorry, funny as a podcaster than he's a stand-up. I know I've only seen five minutes of his special and it's not an accurate representation of his work. I get it. But I'm not going to do more research. It just is what it is. I see what I've seen. First impressions count. I think you suck. I'm not going to watch more. I'm sorry. It just is what it is. It's the internet. There's many videos I kind of scroll by on my fucking feed. It's got fucking audio playing. I don't play it because it looks shit and I'm not interested. So same with this. It just is what it is. But he's way funnier as a podcaster. On a podcast, I've, he's made me he's made me laugh a million times on Legion of Skanks. He's made me laugh whenever he does, whenever I see clips of him from Skankfest. He's made me laugh when he does his own show rap. He's made me laugh. But on stage, the guy sucks with a capital S. So anyway, let's go back on there because Josie said it was the very last line. So let's go line. Why, why can't I speak today? So let's actually go to the video. Let me not, let, let me not be lazy and let me do the guy a favor. Let's actually watch it from the video. And let's see here. So let's go. Let's go to about here, because I want to see what he said about Brendan. Let's go to about maybe there. <laughs> and I waste no time. I apologize right away. I was like, "Oh my God, Miss, I am so sorry." First of all, I, I had no idea that retarded people knew how to use the internet, <laughs> much less subscribe to an RSS feed. Good for her. She goes, "You don't have to apologize to me. You have to apologize to my daughter." And then she put her 16-year-old mentally handicapped daughter on the phone. And I apologize very sincerely. <laughs> And do you want to know what the daughter's reaction was? She goes, Durr. no, she didn't do that. Uh, <laughs> the Durr, started punching a dog. Durr, Durr. She jumped through the window, started stomping on cars. <laughs> we never saw her again. You, you want to know what her real reaction was? I apologize. And her real reaction, she goes, it's okay. I forgive you. I know. I felt like a piece of shit. I was like, that's it. We've learned our lesson. We're never making fun of another mentally handicapped athlete again. So here we are two months later watching ESPN. And I shit you not, there is a mentally handicapped boxer from England who got so good at retarded boxing, he made it all the way to fucking ESPN. We had to make fun of him. He had no moves. He had no rhythm. He couldn't fucking box. By the way, the name of that episode of our podcast was Beat Him Downs. It's not okay. I know it's not okay. It's wrong, and I've accepted that now. <laughs> Same thing. The kid's family was furious. They called the studio. They're screaming. They're yelling. This time, it was the kid's brother. Really letting me have it for like 20 minutes, making me feel like a piece of shit. But it was a lot worse this time because he had a British accent. So I thought I was talking to the retarded kid the whole time. <laughs> He's like, we saw your video. We thought it was poppycock. I was like, oh, this poor kid. He can barely speak. <laughs> poor guy. And the third mentally handicapped athlete that we had to apologize to on behalf of the Legion of Skanks podcast was Brendan Schaub, who is a comedian and a former MMA fighter. <laughs> All right, New York City, I gotta go. Thank you so much. I love you guys. Oh, you fucking suck, bro. You fucking suck. Also, I just watched that fucking special from Shane, which was 10 out of 10. Doesn't it? not make sense like i know i know you americans laugh at our british or english accents but no one listens to somebody speaking with an english accent and thinks that person sounds redacted it sounded way funny when it came from shane because we've all maybe had that thought in our head when we've heard of an australian person speak right not to give away too much for the joke but it kind of that makes more sense the english thing didn't even make it sense like who thinks a person sounds redacted it sounds funny it might sound jovial, but it doesn't sound redacted when you hear an English person. You know I mean, like, what? Huh? Where? But anyway, whatever. His opinion. Um, That joke sucked, but it was a very clever and perfect way to get back into Joe Rogan's good graces. He played the long game. He figured it out. He carried the favor of the fire and the kids subreddit. 
he made them think that you know he was part of their crew and he was a, a friend of theirs and then he effectively used Rogan, no, used Brendan and the sub to get back into Rogan's good graces. And it worked, to be fair to him. It fucking worked. It actually did work. 